my name is Panendra Gupta. So in this video I am going to explain to you about proteins. And in this video I am going to discuss you about structure of the proteins. Uh, firstly I am going to give you introduction and then I am going to give you classification and then I am going to explain to you the structure of the proteins and also the functional classification also. So firstly let us discuss about the introduction on the proteins. So what is mean by proteins? Uh, proteins is not, normally this protein consists of a polypeptide chains, numerous number of polypeptide chains. As this protein consists of numerous number of polypeptide chains, then the molecular weight of the protein will also be more. Okay, then the molecular weight of the protein will also be more. And normally these proteins you can see in human bodies. And this protein acts as building blocks of the human bodies. Normally this protein is called as human uh, building blocks of the human body. And coming to the classification, normally proteins are classified into three types. Uh, they are simple proteins, conjugated proteins and derived proteins. So coming to the simple proteins, normally the simple protein consists of amino acids. But if you see in the case of conjugated protein, it consists of amino acids as well as the non-protein part also. It consists of non-protein part and in the case of derived proteins it consists of simple proteins as well as the conjugated proteins and normally these derived proteins are uh, it is mainly formed or as it is mainly obtained or derived from simple proteins and conjugated proteins okay simple plus conjugated and coming to this classification of the simple proteins it is again subclassified into two types globular protein and sclero proteins globular sclero and examples are must and should important you have to mention examples in the examinations and also you have to remember these examples which will be asked in your entrance examinations also. So coming to the globular proteins, best examples are arginine, globulin and histone. Coming to the scleral proteins, elastin and keratin. And we know about keratin, normally it is found in uh, hair and, uh, and it also found in nails also. Coming to the elastin, elastin is nothing but it is a protein which is mainly found in the elastic fibers. For, uh, for example, if you take in the uh, examples of cartilages, elastic cartilage, right, which is mainly seen in our human body itself. I explained in the previous videos about elastic cartilage in the classification of the cartilage, I explained in the previous video. So the link of that video will be given in the description box. So people who are interested, please watch that video. And coming to the conjugated protein, uh, the these proteins are classified into six types. Which one conjugated proteins are classified into six types? And here, these simple molecules are classified based upon the size and shape, okay? And here these conjugated proteins are mainly classified based upon the amino acid type. So coming to here, normally these are classified into six types. Nuclear protein, glycoprotein, lipoprotein, phosphoproteins, chromoproteins and metalloproteins. And nuclear proteins are nothing but, uh, you know, the proteins like nucleic acid, for example, if you take DNA, RNA, like that. And, and all of these are known, all of these are the best classification of the conjugated proteins. Metalloproteins are nothing but which are, uh, the proteins which are mainly attached to the metallic group are known as metalloproteins. Uh, chromoproteins is nothing but chromo is nothing but uh, color which consists of color and many people think that chromoproteins are nothing but the proteins which are attached to the chromosomes that is not chromosomes this chromoprotein is nothing but it is uh, it consists of color okay and phosphoproteins which are attached to the phospho group in such a way all that okay coming to the derived proteins uh, so it consists of both simple proteins and normally these derived proteins are mainly derived or is obtained from simple simple proteins and as well as the conjugated proteins. And these derived proteins are classified again into two times. They are primary derived proteins and secondary derived proteins. This is, these are the symbols of primary and this is a symbol of secondary. Okay. And gesture symbol will be three degree. Okay. Quaternary structure will be four degree in that way. You have to mention that. So whatever uh, coming to this primary derived proteins. The best example for this primary derived proteins is coagulated proteins and proteases. Coming to the secondary derived proteins, proteases and peptones are the best examples for this secondary derived proteins. So now let us see this functional classification. So based upon the function, based upon the function of the proteins, normally the proteins are classified into nine types based upon their function. Okay. So what are the nine types of proteins? Structural proteins, enzymatic proteins, transport proteins, Hormonal proteins, contractile proteins, storage proteins, genetic proteins, defense proteins, and receptor proteins. So now let us discuss each of the protein now. Come into the structural protein. And the best example for the structural protein is keratin and collagen. And remember that you have to write examples must and should. Okay. And, and coming to the second one, enzymatic proteins. Uh, the best example is pepsin. And what is mean by these enzymatic proteins? Uh, which mainly, uh, these enzymatic proteins mainly plays a major role in the process of digestion like you know digestive enzymes all right and all of the digestive enzymes consist of these enzymatic proteins and the best example is pepsin not only pepsin uh, i have written only one you can also write trypsin also trypsin 
Coming to the third one, transport proteins. This transport proteins mainly plays a major role in transport of uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and if you take examples, hemoglobin and myoglobin. And hemoglobin takes a major role in transport of carbon dioxide and oxygen, and myoglobin plays a major role in transport of carbon monoxide, CO. Okay. Hormonal proteins. In the name itself, it indicates that it consists of uh, normally hormones, which consists of uh, hormone proteins. Now, hormones consist of hormonal proteins. And for example, if you take growth hormone. I have written insulin here, you can also write insulin and also you can also write uh, growth hormone and the growth hormone is normally it is uh, you know it is stimulated from GSH so what is the full form of the GSH? Growth Stimulating Hormone in the intermediate classes you might have learned that you might have learned that in the intermediate classes growth stimulating hormone stimulates growth hormone and the growth hormone consists of these hormonal proteins and the main function of that growth hormone is to uh, maintain growth of our human body Next, fifth one is contractile proteins. So, in the name itself, it indicates that contraction of muscles takes place by these contractile proteins. So, contraction of muscles takes place by contraction of the proteins. That is nothing but, uh, you know, relaxation of the muscles, contraction and relaxation, all of that takes place by these contractile proteins only. And uh, the best example for these contractile proteins are actin and myosin. Coming to the sixth one, storage proteins. Uh, storage proteins are nothing but, uh, which mainly stores. For example, if you take ovum, which is mainly which is mainly released by the females, all of that which which gets stored over, and the storage will be taken place by the storage proteins. And the best example is albumin and gluten. Coming to the seventh one, genetic proteins. Genetic proteins are nothing but which consists of nucleic acids. Uh, I have written the examples here: DNA and RNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid and ribulose nucleic acid. There is nothing but which consists of nucleic acid. Okay, genetic which consists of genetic material. And that nucleic acid consists of genetic protein. Okay, and coming to the eighth one, defense proteins. Defense proteins are nothing but which acts as scavengers for our human body. For example, uh, normally uh, this uh, normally I have said that this acts as scavengers, right? Uh, what is meant by that scavengers means uh, when, there, when there is attack of another foreign material, foreign organisms on our human body, then it rescues that. That is the main function of these defense proteins. And the best example is immunoglobulins. Okay. Coming to the ninth one, receptor proteins, and the best example is G protein coupled receptor. So now let us discuss about the structure of the proteins, and structure of the proteins is very much important. Listen properly. So now let us discuss about the structure of proteins. Structure of proteins are classified into four types: primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure. So coming to the primary structure, let us discuss about each of the structures. So first one, let us discuss about primary structure. This primary structure is simple structure which consists of polypeptide chain and the polypeptide chain is linear in shape. Okay. Normally this primary structure is simple structure which consists of polypeptide chain and the polypeptide chain which is mainly formed over there is linear in shape. Remember this point. It is linear in shape. They will ask you what is the shape of the primary structure. It is linear. What is the shape of the polypeptide chain which is mainly present in the primary structure of the protein. Then you have to answer that it is linear. Okay. Whereas if you see in this case, this is the structure of uh, this is the primary structure of protein, and normally all of these are amino acids. This is one amino acid, this is another, this is another, and this is another. First, second, third, and fourth I have mentioned here, right? And these are known as amino acids. And the presence of amino acids you can see in the R group here. Uh, this is R group, right? In each and every amino acid, you can I have represented R group, right? And that R con R group consists of amino acid. A that amino acid will be either different or else same. It doesn't mean okay. So either it consists of same amino acid, nothing will happen. If it consists of different amino acid, then also it forms structure of protein. Okay. So all of this, all of these amino acids will get bind over with each other and mainly forms a polypeptide chain. And that polypeptide chain is said to be as primary structure of the protein. Now let us discuss about the second. So coming to the second structure of protein. Uh, before entering into second structure, I have wanted to say one thing before I uh, before. Uh, in primary structure, I, I forgot to say you one thing that normally I have said you what I have said in primary structure each of the amino acid will be linked over e with each other and that mainly forms a polypeptide chain and that polypeptide chain refers to the structure of protein right and I forgot to say you one thing there each of the amino acid will be linked over with each other right and that linkage takes place by this peptide bond okay for example if you take this one amino acid and this is another amino acid and this both amino acids will be linked with peptide bond which I have drawn with red color right that will be linked with red uh, that is nothing but peptide bond and that's all that's only the thing i forgot to say in primary structure but if you see in the case of secondary structure this amino acid will get bind over with peptide bond 
along with the peptide bond the amino acids will get linked over with hydrogen bonds also okay and the hydrogen bonds which will be linked over which will be bonded over uh, between each amino acid will be single and weak that is nothing but it consists of only single hydrogen bond and the hydrogen bond will be weak but if you see in the case of peptide bond it will be strong either in case of primary structure and second structure this peptide bond will be strong but if you see in the case of second structure this hydrogen bonds will be single only single hydrogen bond is present and that hydrogen bond will also be weak okay now i'll explain you the presence of hydrogen bond in the structure normally this is the structure of second uh, this is the second structure of protein and if you see here roughly this is the second structure of protein this will be in this shape and this forms a polypeptide chain right normally all of this now what i have said you all of these amino acids will get bind over with each other with the help of peptide bonds and mainly forms a polypeptide chain right so here this is known as polypeptide chain and each polypeptide chain is referred to as domain domain okay and the second structure is also the tbs alpha helix structure now we'll explain you the structure see here this is the second structure of protein and if you see here this is one amino acid second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth normally i have drawn only eight amino acids here normally there are many number of amino acids which can be present in the structure of protein and if you see here one amino acid will be linked with another amino acid with peptide bond right red color red color indicates peptide bond peptide bond okay listen properly listen properly see here each of the amino acid will be bound over with peptide bond which i have drawn with red color and in this way all of these amino acids will be linked over linked over right and then where is the presence of hydrogen bonds if you see here here is the presence of hydrogen atom right and here is the presence of oxygen that is nothing but keto group c double bond o and that both will be linked over with hydrogen bond only single hydrogen bond i have drawn with dotted lines because it is weak right it is weak so it is said to be as weak hydrogen bonds and that is that is nothing but single and weak singly weak hydrogen bonds simple to say and that hydrogen bond will be linked over with h and o group like this here here and here with this both right and this is the second structure of protein coming to the tertiary structure ah here yeah, before entering into the tertiary structure i wanted to explain you uh, one more thing of the secondary structure so that is nothing but beta pleated sheet now i am going to explain you about beta pleated sheet and beta sheet at plate what uh, if you see here this is the structure of the beta sheet at plate right and normally this beta sheet at plate consists of protein sheet beta pleated sheet consists of protein sheet this blue color one which i have drawn is known as protein sheet and each of the protein sheet consists of internal end and c terminal end and internal end is nothing but it consists of nitrogen group and if you see here the dotted line structures which i have drawn is known as weak hydrogen bond where i have said you before the secondary structure consists of weak hydrogen bonds right single hydrogen bond and weak hydrogen bond that is nothing but singly weak simply to say it is singly weak hydrogen bond and if you see here there is a bond which will be mainly formed between c c terminal end to n terminal end there is nothing which consists of nitrogen group this is the formation of weak hydrogen bond and this will be formed in next protein sheet also see here the c terminal end will be attached to the nitrogen of next protein sheet c terminal end will be attached to the next protein sheet okay so with the help of weak hydrogen bond so this this is about the secondary structure and normally the second structure will be stabilized by this hydrogen bonds itself okay by this hydrogen bonds so now let us discuss about the tertiary structures so now let us discuss about tertiary structure this tertiary structure consists of two to three domains that is nothing but two or three domains domains is nothing but the group of polypeptide chains which are mainly formed by the amino acids i have said you in the secondary structure right in secondary structure here only i have drawn the uh, diagram in the secondary structure and here i have drawn the tertiary structure if you see in the tertiary structure this is one domain this is another domain this is third domain first second third domains three, there are totally three domains either it consists of two domains or as three domains so this is the domain okay and i was also explained in second structure so if you see this will be the structure so what you can see in the structure normally here this is one amino acid this is another this is third fourth fifth sixth seventh amino acids not only seven amino acids there are many amino acids which will be present in the structure of protein i have said you before only right and each of the amino acid will be bind with peptide bonds which i have drawn with red color and in the same way uh, each of the hydrogen bond and o group will be bind over with hydrogen bonds and the hydrogen bonds which are mainly present will be weak and consists of only single hydrogen bond and along with this hydrogen bond disulfide bonds ionic bonds and hydrophobic bonds are also present okay so this will be the structure uh, so this structure this is one of the domain 
and this will be another domain and if we draw here some more amino acids this will be another domain so this is about the test storage structure so now let us discuss last so coming to the last quaternary structure so in this quaternary structure there will be many domains so there will be numerous number of domains uh, i have said you what is the domain in the just now i have said you so this is one of the domain this is another this is another 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 numerous there will be many number of domains and each of the domain will get bound over with each other and mainly forms a structure and the structure is said to be as oli oligomer oligomers okay and in the same way this structure also consists of hydrogen bonds i didn't draw properly because if i draw over here then there will be much space which will be taken with us and so in the same way before i have said you explained about in the test structure secondary structure primary structure uh, draw the amino acids in the same way but draw the but you have to get the shape in this way okay in such a way that it consists of many domains so what is mean by domain i have said you before itself uh, domain is nothing but group of uh, amino acids which mainly forms a polypeptide chain is said to be as only one domain one, one domain one domain in the way many domains will be bound over with each other mainly forms a structure of oligomers okay oligomers so this is about the proteins structure of proteins classification and introduction and etc so in next video let us discuss about amino acids